Hello and welcome to the JPA tutorial. In this first video, we are going to learn what is JPA, why JPA is important, which is the JPA architecture, what ORM stands for, how to install and use JPA. JPA stands for Java Persistence API. It's a specification of Java. JPA used to persist data between Java object and relational database. You can think JPA as a bridge between the object-oriented domain model and the relational database system. JPA is a collection of classes and methods to store data into the database. Remember that JPA is just a specification, not an implementation. There are a lot of implementations of JPA like Hibernate, Toplink, Hibatis and ORM Lite. When you want to implement an application like a web application, for sure you have to store and retrieve data. You have to perform a lot of database operations. Maybe you spend more time to deal with this database than writing business logic code. JPA can help you. As I said, it is a bridge between object model, so your Java application, and relational model, your database. The first version of Java Persistent API, JPA 1.0, was released in 2006 as a part of Enterprise Java Bean 3.0 specification. The last version of JPA, JPA 2.2, was released in 2017 and it supports Java 8 date and time, it provides an ability to stream a query result. Now let's talk about the JPI architecture. JPA is a source to store business entity as a relational entities and it shows how to define a POYO, plain old Java object, as an entity is how to manage entities with relations. Now I'm going to explain each part of the JPA architecture. The most important part is the entity. Entities are the persistence objects stored in the database. The entity manager is an interface that manages the persistence operations on object. One entity manager instance can manage multiple entities. Entity transaction it is a one-to-one -one relationship with the entity manager. For each entity manager operation, there is an entity transaction instance. Entity manager factory. This is a factory class of the entity manager. It creates and manages multiple entity manager instances. Persistence. This class contains static method to obtain entity manager factory instance. Query. This interface is implemented by each JPI vendor to obtain relational objects that meet the criteria. Let's continue this tutorial and let me talk about ORM, Object Relational Mapping. Object Relational Mapping, ORM, is a functionality that is used to develop and maintain a relationship between an object and a relational database. This can be done mapping one object state to a database column. ORM can manage different operations in a easy way, for example, inserting, updating, deleting, and much more. There are a lot of frameworks that function on ORM mechanism, like Hibernate, Hibatis, Toplink, and ORM Lite. Today, Hibernate ORM is one of the most mature JPA implementation and still a popular option for an ORM in Java. There are four different ORM mapping, the one-to-one, -one, the one-to-many, the many-to-one, and the many-to-many. -many. Each of them have different annotation. The ORM architecture is composed of three parts, object, mapping, and relational parts. First, we have to create our object, a Java class that contains attributes and methods like getter and setter. The second part, named mapping, contains 
the JPI provider, the mapping file, the JPI loader and the object grid. The JPI provider is related to the vendor product, for example, Hibernate, Toplink, Hibatis. The mapping file, persistence.xml, consists a mapping configuration between the data in a Java class and data in a relational database. The JPI loader works like a cache memory, which can load the relational grid data. And the object grid is a temporary location that can store the copy of the relational database, like a cache memory. All queries against the database are first affected on the data in that object grid. Only after it is committed, it affects the main database. In the end, the relational part that contains the relational data, which is connected to the business component. When the business component commits the data, it is stored in the database physically. Until then, the modified data is stored in the cache memory. Now I'm going to create the first entity. Each entity has metadata. This metadata can be in the following form, as a Java notation or as a XML file. I'm going to create a new Maven project. I will select Maven Archetype Quick Start. As a name, JPA Tutorial. After that, the first thing that we want to do is to add the dependencies that we needed inside the GPA tutorial. So, first of all, I'm going to use um, Hibernate ORM. So, I need to import the dependency Hibernate Core. Then, I want to use uh, two different databases the H2 uh, database, the in-memory database. And also, I want to use Postgres SQL as database. Good. So let's move and uh, let's go ahead and let's start to create our first entity. I'm going to create a classic entity that I call student. I'm going to create uh, the student uh, Java as a Java class with three different attributes, the ID, the first name and the last name. Plus, I'm going to create the getter and setter method for the student class.
As I said, I want to show you first uh, how to create uh, the mapping XML. So I'm going to create the mapping.xml and I'm going to put this new file inside the directory resources meta inf and then mapping.xml. Identity mapping tag define the schema definition to allow tags into the XML file. Then the description tag define the description about the application. Then I'm going to put the tag entity that define the entity class which I want to convert into a table in a database. Then the table, of course, the tag tables define the table name. Now let's move on and add our first attributes. So I'm going to put the tag attributes that define the attributes, so the fields in a table. The first one, the one I'm going to put is the ID. This tag defines the primary key of the table. The generate value tag defines how to assign the primary key value, such as a manual, automatic, or a given sequence. I'm going to use the automatic the auto value. Then I'm going to create two different tags. I'm going to create the basic tag for the first name and the basic tag for the last name. So the tag basic is used to define the remain attribute of the table. If you remember inside the student class we put the first name and the last name as attribute. So I'm going to create two different basic tags, one for the first name and the second for the last name. Inside each basic tag, I'm going to add the column tag is used to define the user table field name and some attribute. We create our student class and then we create a, our mapping.xml class. Now I'm going forward and I will show you that we can achieve the same result but using the Java notation. I'm going to send the student class and I'm going to add the entity annotation, the table annotation, the entity annotation specify to declare the class as an entity or a table. Then for the ID, I will specify that the attribute ID is the primary key of our table. And of course, I will use the annotation generator value. This annotation specifies how the identity attribute can be initialized as automatic or manual. In this case, as I used automatic in my mapping XML, I'm going to use automatic also inside the annotation generator value. For first name and last name, I will map in these two attributes as a column in my database. So I'm going to use the annotation column 
this annotation is to use to specify column or attribute for persistent properties. I'm going to give a name, so for the first name, I'm going to say first name and other attributes. There are a lot of other annotations that you can use and we are going to see in the following video. Like for example, the annotation for the relationship, like many to many, one to many, one to one, or for example, the join column annotation. Everything is working without error. Before complete this video, I will set up the H2 database that I'm going to use in, in the following videos. We have completed the first video of the GPA tutorial. In this video, we have learned what is a GPA, why GPA is important, which is the GPA architecture, what is the object relational mapping, and how to install and use GPA. If you have any question or doubts, don't hesitate to write them inside the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be updated with a new video that I will upload. See you in the next video of GPA tutorial. Thank you for watching this video, bye!